So um, when you think about space, you probably think about the Apollo moon landings and the International Space Station and these sort of grand human achievements. But you probably don't think about the entrepreneurs that are transforming nearly every major industry here on Earth. But that's the opportunity in the space <coughs> economy. GPS, geospatial intelligence, satellite communications are the invisible backbone of the world's largest industries today. A GPS, it's easy to take for granted because it's in the background and it's, you know, usually and it's free. But um, it has generated trillions of dollars in economic value in some of the largest venture returns that we've ever seen. So a lot of people think about asteroid mining, space stations, this sort of thing. That's really 1% of what's going on. Everything that's happening in the space economy today, 90%, is in satellites. <coughs> orbital infrastructure that's benefiting terrestrial markets and your everyday lives here on Earth. So we're all familiar with the Apollo moon landings and the original space race, uh, the US and Russia um, trying to game of one-upsmanship. And then the US won and then kind of lost its incentive and motivation to continue innovating and moving forward. So we went from nothing in space, to satellites in space, to humans in space, to landing on the moon. And then without any incentive or motivation, we, were, we regressed. We went backwards until the US didn't even have an ability to launch, um, to, to launch ourselves. So um, the market was very stagnant, very limited. There was a handful of defense contractors on one hand, and the US government really as the sole customer on the other. Um, not a lot of innovation, not a lot of progress going on until SpaceX came along. SpaceX removed the barriers to entry and allowed for entrepreneurs to access orbit for the first time. Now we're seeing um, a ton of innovation happening. Um, we're seeing an unprecedented amount of satellites and new data coming down that is powering um, our understanding of climate markets, um, precision agriculture, uh, you name it. And so we have a record number of launches um, and it's a new race uh, these days, so it's now the U.S. and China are accounting for basically nearly all of the activity that's happening. So, um, yeah, AI has captured the imagination. 2023 was really a year that we uh, experimented with it, all of us, um, including, you know, consumers and enterprise. Um, I think 2024 is going to be a big year. It's going to continue to accelerate, as we've already seen. Um, but AI is nothing new in the space economy. I mean, it's really, um, your AI is really only as good as the data that you're using to power the, um, the development of your algorithms to derive useful insights. Um, in the space economy, particularly in geospatial intelligence, right, the satellites that are going around the planet with different sensors and gathering really valuable information about the movement of, of goods and, and activity on the surface of the planet. We've had satellites up for decades gathering a crazy amount of data and information. So um, this is actually a first mover, and, and these geospatial companies, Earth observation companies, have been leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning for years. Um, and they are eagerly, you know, ingesting and, and, and applying uh, these new tools to basically allow them to um, make sense of, deal with these massive data sets, uh, derive useful insights from them, and, and, and uh, take some action. No, so I mean, look, 2023 was a really difficult year for tech generally. Like space technology is a subset of that. So, um, you know, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, um, a wave of layoffs across tech, um, all enterprise, you know, big tech companies were sort of tightening their belts. Um, they weren't buying a lot of new products, which meant for any new company coming onto the scene and trying to sell to these companies, right, that revenue is really hard to come by. So, um, that made things really tough. Also, with higher interest rates, capital was more expensive. So it was more difficult to raise capital. Um, the bar to raise capital got higher. At the same time, it was more difficult to 
generate revenue that would allow you to do those things. So it, 2023 was a really tough year um, for tech and for space companies as well. Um, one interesting um, thing that came out of that is that governments have continued to spend. Um, governments around the world are awakening to the importance of, of space and satellite technology um, and are investing in it heavily. So um, there was actually an increase in the amount of government dollars that were going to purchase um, uh, commercial services from, from commercial space companies. And so uh, 2024 was a really incredible year. Um, innovation did not slow down. We're kind of on an exponential curve in terms of technology adoption, markets opening up. Um, and so even 2023 wasn't able to slow, slow things down. So it kind of goes back to what I was just saying that um, there were, you know, in a market where enterprise dollars are tight, um, governments continued to spend. And so uh, one, one good example of, of this is the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has really put a spotlight on the growing capabilities of commercial space companies. Um, in 2022, in Q2, was like the steepest decline in the financial markets, right? The public markets were basically in a free fall. Um, but a lot of space companies, particularly those that are providing information and insights to enterprises and governments, we're seeing record revenues because as the world becomes more dynamic and uncertain, you want to better understand what's happening and develop strategies to adapt, um, to address those challenges. It doesn't matter whether it's climate change or conflict or a ship stuck in the Soyuz Canal that's preventing you from getting any of your, you know, the goods that you need at home. So um, it's counter cyclical in many ways. Many aspects of the space economy are counter cyclical um, and in the steepest decline in the financial markets, our portfolio was seeing record revenues. So in that way, it's better, better investment than tech. <laughs> What's the space for us? Okay, so everyone's favorite topic. Um, uh, in the space economy book, I uh, actually go into uh, the space force, its origins, why it exists. And I think a lot of people would be surprised to hear that this was not some harebrained scheme that was sort of plucked out of the air um, and implemented last minute. It was actually, it had been cooking for almost three decades. Um, and actually it was in 2007 China launched an ASAT, an anti-satellite weapon, um, to blow up one of their own satellites. It created a ton of debris. It's like that movie Gravity, where like one, it's called Kessler Syndrome, where one thing blows up and it creates more debris, which then hits other things and creates more debris, and it's like this massive mess. Um, uh, so, so China did this in 2007, and actually Obama put a lot of money towards setting up the infrastructure for the Space Force and actually put a down payment on it. So um, this is something that's been um, underway for a long time. The, the fact of the matter is, is that um, space, is, space technologies, satellite technologies, are, are essential for our economic stability and our national security. Governments around the world are beginning to prioritize their protection. Um, we have, we've gone from a few hundred satellites in orbit to thousands. We're going to tens of thousands of satellites and then possibly hundreds of thousands of satellites. We need to make sure that the orbits are safe to operate in safely so that we can continue to get where we need to go so that um, our economy continues to, to um, operate as it does. Again, these are, these are the invisible backbone of the modern global economy, so they need to stay running. So I think a lot of people take for granted the fact that technology doesn't just progress on its own. Does, it, it doesn't happen. You, there has to be active participation. Innovation uh, requires participation. Um, change for me uh, means progress. So again, if you go back to the Apollo missions, right, these massive uh, human scale, global, for all of humanity achievements, right, that we accomplished 50 years ago, 
we stopped investing, we stopped, there was no incentive or motivation to continue to innovate and what happened, we regressed. We regressed back to the point of like basically having almost no capability. Until SpaceX, the change agent in this case came along, um, they uh, rethought how you could get to orbit. And by doing so, they brought a new vehicle online that was reusable. It brought the cost of accessing orbit way down. It made just bringing the cost down and making orbit more accessible has given rise to 2,000. We're tracking $300 billion invested into 2,000 unique space companies over the last 10 years, up from basically zero before SpaceX. So for me, change means progress. Um, and a better life for all of us. <laughs>